Merry Christmas, baby. Reindeer's coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Hello everyone, Christina here with day nine of the holiday card series for 2022. And this is also a video for simonsystamp.com. Today I'm using the stamp set included in the December 2022 card kit called Joy to You and Yours. And I'm going to be creating three cards with this stamp set. These are cards that I dreamed up while I was working on the stamp set design. And I think they turned out really, really great. All three of them are more on the elegant side. So for those of you who love elegant Christmas cards, this is perfect for you. The large kind of floral image that's in the stamp set is quite large. I've put it on this big block from Lawn Fawn, and I'm using it on a block instead of in a misty because I'm going to be moving it around quite a bit. And my cardstock here, which is Schoolhouse Red cardstock from Simon, it's cut to five by seven. And so there just wasn't enough room to kind of maneuver and work that stamp around the edges inside the misty. I'm using the color Merlot from Simon, and this is a real, really great deep cranberry shade, and it's perfect for going around the outside edge of this red cardstock. So I'm kind of going around the corners, filling in some gaps with the, the two ends of the image, and just trying to fill in all those gaps, keeping the center area of the card blank. So after I had all of my stamping done, I then came in with a blending brush. This is a blending brush from Simon, and I'm using that same ink, and I'm just intensifying those corners. Now, I think in hindsight, if I was to do this again, I wouldn't have put so much ink blending on the corners. Right now, it looks really great, but later when you see it, when it's all dried back, you lose some of the detail on the images. So I cleaned off my stamp the best that I could, but we all know that red ink does stain clear stamps. Not a problem. It doesn't affect the way the stamp works. You just might have a little bit of that red ink sticking around. So even though I'm stamping this in Versamark ink, which is a clear ink, it is still transferring some of that red ink that I was using before. Not a huge deal because I plan to use some gold embossing powder on this one. And as I stamp around the outer edge, this time instead of focusing on the corners, I focused on the straight edges of my cardstock. So I wanted to get those images coming all the way across. And I plan to have something through the center of this card design. So where those kind of leaf and stem shapes overlap, it's not going to be a problem. I've coated my stamping in some gold embossing powder. This is gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And I love how it gives this really detailed, elegant pattern, almost like a twall, but not quite. Kind of has that kind of damask pattern sort of feel to it, but that's not exactly what it is. But I heat set that with my heat tool until all the embossing powder was melted. For the third background for my cards today, I'm taking that same stamp and I'm going to nestle it up in this top corner of this A2 card. Now, if you focus on where the little pine needles are, if you try to get the pine needles as close to the edge as possible, then you're able to stamp this image twice by rotating the card front. You'll see here in a minute and you can get a nice full background. Using the color Pine Ink from Simon, I'm stamping that once, and then I'm going to rotate my card, and then I'll stamp in the other corner. This is an actual folded card base, um, so it's ready to go as soon as I'm done stamping. So I just double check to make sure that that would look okay, and then I continued on. Now, the two kind of centers of each of these images are going to overlap in the center of the card. I'm planning to cover that up with a sentiment. So just the center overlaps, not anywhere else. And as long as you have something in the center, you shouldn't have a problem. While I've got my Misty out doing a few more additional stampings, I've got one greeting from the stamp set that I'm stamping in Versifying Onyx Black Ink. And I'll just stamp this and then set it aside for when I start assembling the cards. And then another sentiment is on some midnight green cardstock from Simon. And I'm using this large 
joy label. I love this one. It was such a joy to design. I, I mean, literally, <laughs> and I'm positioning it in the center of my cardstock I'm using an anti-static powder tool to prevent any of the embossing powder from going in areas where I don't want it. And then I'm stamping the whole label design in Versamark ink. I'm going to be doing some gold embossing on this dark green cardstock. I think it's such a rich color combination and it's actually going to go on top of that green stamping. So it's going to be a green, gold, and white card, very elegant color combination. Put some more of that gold embossing powder on top and then heat set this with my heat tool until it was smooth and melted. So now we're going to go back to those backgrounds and work with them for our card designs. Here's the first one. It's dried back. It's been drying for a few hours and you can see how some of the detail on the images on the outer edge are a little bit kind of uh, faded back, but I think it still looks beautiful. So first I tested my cardstock to make sure it was completely dry. I did an anti-static powder tool and then put some embossing powder on and everything came off nice and clean. So I knew I was ready for my stamping. Because I'm planning to use heat embossing powder, I'm doing the anti-static powder tool once again all over this entire background. And then I'm going to position my stamps directly on top I'm using a grid transparency sheet just to help me get everything lined up just right. And I mostly used it because that really, really long line sentiment, the second line is very, very long and I knew I'd have trouble getting it straight. So just putting it on top of this grid transparency sheet and then moving it around it gave me the best chance of getting everything straight. So I closed the door of my Misty, transferring the stamps to the door and then I peeled off that transparency sheet. I'm stamping the greetings, both of them in verse mark and I'm very gently letting the stamps kiss down on this cardstock. I don't want to press too hard and have it kind of blob out any of the type. I'm applying that gold embossing powder. Once again, this is gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And I'm sprinkling that on and then tapping off the excess. And then when it comes to heat setting this, I wanted to make sure I kept my heat tool moving. I didn't want to stay in one place a little bit too long because this is the front of the card and I, I need to adhere it to, the, to a card base. So I don't want it to get warped too much. But isn't that so elegant? I love it. It turned out so beautiful. You can see the a little bit of the powder sticking around. All of that came off. This is the anti sac powder with just a rub of my finger. So I'm going to trim this down for an A7 card. So I grabbed my A7 layers dies from Waffle Flower and I just trimmed it down just a tiny bit so that I could have a white border on my card front. I used some Tombow Extreme Adhesive for the back of my stamped piece and then I put that directly down onto a white 5x7 card base. So now on to the second card. I've got that gold and white background. I'm using some Tombow Extreme Adhesive to adhere that directly to the card front. And this time I didn't cut my background down. I wanted it to be the exact size of my card front. For an element in the center, I'm using the Make It Merry Pattern Papers from Honeybee. I have, there's this really fun diagonal stripe. It's kind of like a peppermint stripe. I thought that would go really well with the golden white. And it was almost a little bit too stark of white and red. So I came in with some schoolhouse red ink and I just ink blended this on really lightly. And that just gives it more of a tone on tone look with a red and a darker red. So now I'm going to take the greeting that I stamped earlier and I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to do the four straight edges and then I'll be using my scissors to kind of uh, tick out the corners that go right along that label shape. Now, I did design some coordinating dies that go with the stamp set. As of right now, I'm not sure if they're out yet. I'm actually filming this before the card kit comes out. So um, just know that if, this, if the coordinating dies aren't out yet, they will be soon. And in the coordinating dies, it has a very close cut line for each of these label shapes. So uh, for now, since I don't have the dies, I use my scissors. But the coordinating dies that are coming soon will cut them out really nicely. For this long kind of ribbon piece, I first positioned it on the card just to see how long I wanted it. And then I trimmed off the end. Now to make a perfect ribbon V shape, do a vertical cut right up through the center and then connect the corner with the top of that cut from each corner. 
and that gives you the perfect V-shaped ribbon end on your, on your paper. I use this trick all the time, especially when I'm doing greeting banners. So I put my ribbon shape on some foam squares, also from Simon, and then use my tweezers to position that over the center of my card. I then put some Tombow Extreme Adhesive on the back of my greeting label, and then put that directly over my ribbon shape. I decided it didn't need any additional um, dimension, and so I just glued it directly down onto it. So there is card number two. I'm going to move on to three, uh, the third card. And this one is a label shape that the dies really cut out well. It has this nice curve around those accents on the top and bottom. But since I don't have the die, I'm going to improvise and show you how I'm cutting this one out. I cut the two sides and then I grabbed a pencil and made some pencil marks just a little bit outside from those center accents. And then I marked each of the corners and I used a ruler to make sure that the marks were about equal distance from each corner. And then I'm going to take my ruler and connect the corners with that center point. And I'm going to use my craft knife to cut this and just a lot of slow, light pressured cuts gets the job done. Then I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to line up those pencil marks once again from one corner to that center area. And this is going to give me a nice kind of a gentle V-shape cut on the end of my label. I'm gonna show you how I do this on the other end as well. So I've got that pencil mark and I'm gonna add two more pencil marks, one for each corner. And I'm just gonna make little tick marks right there. And then I can connect each corner with the center area. And I'm just once again using my craft knife to cut out this shape. Like I said before, the coordinating dies that will be out soon um, actually have an even better shape than this that, that it cuts. Um, so I'm definitely going to be ordering those and getting my hands on those dies because I love this label. I think it looks absolutely beautiful and I want to use it on practically everything. All right, so here's the finished shape. You can see how nice that looks. I'm gonna put some foam squares on the back of that greeting and put it directly over my green stamped background. This card came together really, really quickly. Just stamping the background and then adding that label right on top. And that finishes up the third card using the stamp set included in the December 2022 card kit from simusstamp.com. You can pick up the card kit with all of the contents. There's some really fun papers and some other items, or you can get the stamp set separately. Thanks so much for watching today. All the supplies I use today are listed down below, and I will see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.